Ladies and gentlemen, once again, put your hands together for Les Levine. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for all you do. And this is a great turnout, as always. And I'm looking around the room. and so many guys I've played softball with or racquetball with who know much more than everybody on this panel, including me, Alan Herzog, Al Levine, Gary Rosen, uh, Steve Smiley. Who else knows more than us? Well, most of you. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. It is, it is uh, tremendous to get up this early. We got the weather to cooperate. Um, Brad Sellers, the mayor of uh, Warrensville Heights. Hello, Brad. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Brad, of course, if you don't know, played Israel. How long did you play in Israel? I was there one year. One year? One year. Yeah. Did they, was the playbook right to left or left to right? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> no, no wonder David Blatt didn't make it here. <laughs> Brad, of course, uh, is the guy everybody knows about the shot, but Brad with the pass, who passed it to Michael Jordan. And I, I forget what he did with the ball. I think he scored a basket, right, Brad? <laughs> you got the assist on yeah, the play. Something. <laughs> yeah. um, back, in the, back in the old days in radio when I started, we used to hate the competition. We don't hate the competition anymore. And uh, Aaron Goldhammer is here from uh, ESPN 850, the really big show. Um, Aaron, tell us how you got to this point in your career here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, dumb luck is really. <laughs> um, I uh, came to Cleveland with our company, Good Karma Brands, when we bought a daytime only sports talk radio station that was a gospel music station um, on East 80th and Euclid. My first day was cutting down trees around the transmitter site. Um, we flipped it from gospel music to sports, a couple of Jewish kids, and uh, now um, we've ended up buying WKNR, obviously, since then, and becoming this ESPN Cleveland brand that we're really proud of. One of my first days there, I met this really loud mouth television personality in Cleveland named Tony Rizzo. We launched a radio show in 2007 and have been on the air together for 12 years. Wow. Yeah. And, a, and a new daddy, right? I'm a new dad, yes. Stella um, was born December 9th, um, and so she had her 12-week birthday on Sunday. And Allie, my wife, went back to work yesterday, so this is a big transition in our lives. Uh, but everything is going really well. She's beautiful. Yeah, Thanks. Tough to you. Thank you. Cleveland Heights' his own Andy Baskin. 92.3 The Fan. Hello, Andy. Hi, Les. How are you? Good. How are you? Today? Every day. Good. Okay. Yeah. And how did you get to this spot? Um, it's been a long road, hasn't it? I, don't know. I, I graduated from Heights in 86. I graduated from Kent in 90. I moved to Montana for five years. I lived in Columbus for five years. I did television there and, and radio and television there. Um, then I ended up at Fox Sports Ohio, where I hosted the Indians pre- and post-game shows. Uh, also did the Cavaliers pre- and post-game shows, filled in a little bit on Blue Jackets pre-game shows, went to Channel 3 for a year, uh, was at Channel 5 for 10 years. Now I can't believe it's been eight years for us, right? Eight years for us at 92.3 The Fan. I will tell you one of the things that I'm probably most proud of has nothing to do with broadcasting. It's the fact that uh, I've teamed up with the JCC this year, and for the first time ever, we'll be taking an all-Jewish hockey team to the Maccabi or Maccabee games, oh, whatever wow. you want to call them. Um, so Kelly over at the JCC has been awesome. Uh, it's really neat. We, you know, we had about three kids that went last year to California, and they had to merge with a team from uh, Virginia Beach. And then this year, we've got 16 kids from Northeast Ohio. Um, I remember when I, when I was playing at Cleveland Heights, we had three at Heights or four at Heights, and maybe Shaker had a couple kids that were playing. Now, I, I mean, I can't tell you how proud I am to be representing Cleveland and representing the JCC here. Uh, in taking a team to uh, Detroit in August. So our first ever full Team Cleveland uh, Maccabi Games hockey team, and I'm, I'm lucky enough to be the head coach. So I know I do a lot of things, but I'm really, really proud of that, and uh, we're looking forward to that too. So, Good luck to you. Yeah. And by the way, if you see um, a lot of the kids, not only just hockey players, but soccer players and baseball players and basketball players are selling these cards. What are they called? But just booster cards. Okay. So if you see any of those kids trying to sell those booster cards, they're going for a good cause, and, and all those kids are going to the Maccabi game. So thanks for letting me do my little platform. Les, it's been great. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, I, I worked with a guy, Pat McCabe, when I was at WHK, and he had a way, he had an idea to improve hockey, and maybe you can help me. Sure. Two pucks. <laughs> I don't think so, but sure. No, that, Why? That wouldn't, it wouldn't work? No, you are, most people can't see the first one. How are they going to see the second one? <laughs> uh, I could have said this about uh, Hammer, but I, I, I'll say it about the Adam the Bull, that uh, this, this town is uh, pretty provincial, provincial at times, and it's, it's tough for somebody to come in town and, and uh, without hearing, well, what do you know about Cleveland? You didn't live through Bernie Kosar. You didn't live through the drive, the fumble. Uh, Aaron did, and of course, uh, Adam the Bull. Uh, hard to believe, you, you won't, when he starts talking, you'll, you'll find it hard to believe he's from New York. But um, <laughs> he's done a great job coming here. What he did do was move to the west side. I don't know what kind of advice he got, but he's a, a west sider. We have Adam three Jews in every town on the west side. <laughs> and we all meet together at Temple. <laughs> Adam the Bull, 92.3 The Fan. Thank you, Les. What, what brought you to Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, stuck around for the seven, eight years that uh, Yeah, it'll be Andy eight years in August. Um, well, it's funny, you know, I always wanted to do this for a living. I really wanted to do baseball play-by-play. -play. That was really the true dream. But I always wanted to talk sports. And, um, I, but I dropped out of college originally. I wasn't ready, and I worked a bunch of uh, real jobs. I worked for an oil company. I worked at Pizza Hut. I worked uh, a million different things. And at 26 years old, I went back to college, and I've been living my dream ever since. But what's funny is the fan, I don't know a lot of people know this. I have mentioned it on the air once before, but... The fan almost never happened. I was, I was uh, working in New York part-time uh, in the same company, and uh, about six months before the fan went on the air, my boss, I had done an overnight shift in New York, and six in the morning, my boss calls me into the office. I'm thinking, what what I do wrong? And he says, well, we're about to offer you a full-time job in the company. I can't tell you what city it is, but I'll tell you it's east of the Mississippi. That's all he told me. And so I go home, I wake up my wife at a quarter to seven in the morning, and I said, my boss is sitting, it's gonna be, a, they're offering me a job. Now, I didn't think at the time that it was gonna be a new station. I just assumed it was gonna be a station that existed and they were gonna offer me a position. So I'm looking east of the Mississippi and all the cities that CBS at the time had stations were all cities. I was like, yeah, I'd love to go to Chicago. I'd love to go here. <laughs> I was like, just not Detroit. That's the only place I don't wanna go. And then, of course, a few months later, I got a call that it's going to be Cleveland. And I'll be totally honest, I had never been to Cleveland before. My first reaction was, was like, Cleveland? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, anyway, a after talking to a few people that had lived here, I was very excited, pumped to be coming here. And a month later, my boss calls and says, they changed the plan. They're not starting a sports station in Cleveland. And I was devastated. I went from not really wanting to go to Cleveland initially to being beyond excited about the opportunity and then uh, it was, it was, the rug was pulled out from under me. Well, a month later, they changed their mind again, and it gave me the offer to come here, and I've uh, loved living here ever since. My wife calls Cleveland user-friendly, uh, and, and she's right. I do like living on the west side, even though there's very few Jews, because it's much easier to get around on the west side. And I made it on time here to the east side, by the way, this year. Good for you. The heart-pounding, fast-breaking action of college basketball is back when the 2019 Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament returns to the queue March 13th through the 16th, presented by Visit Myrtle Beach. Pulses will rise and hearts will race as the men and women of the MAC put it all on the line. Tickets for the MAC tournament are on sale now at the Q box office, online at thequeuearena.com, and at all Northern Ohio discount drug marts. MAC Tournament Basketball, be there. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It's the best of the best, Cleveland. All-star cars, hot rods, and motorcycles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston-Powered Autorama. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the IX Center. If a piston makes it go, it's in this all-star show. Featuring motorcycles, antique trucks, insane hot rods in the asylum, tractors, military vehicles, along with all-star theme car clubs on display. New this year is Fat Man's Invasion with Euro Imports, Sport Compacts, Low Riders, and more. PistonPowerShow.com for details. Kids 12 and under are free. Discount tickets on sale now at select discount drug mark locations and Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge.
let me ask uh, yeah. Hammer and, and uh, Adam the Bull. Um, what, when you find out you're coming to Cleveland, what do you do? Do you read a book? Do you call people? What, do you just say, I'll show up and figure it out? How, what do you do, Aaron? So, so our, our company, I was sort of aware that Cleveland was in the mix with a number of markets where our ownership was considering buying a new sports radio station or a station and flipping it to sports. Um, and I was 23, 24 years old. And my boss at the time, uh, Evan Cohen, called me and said, uh, who's the third baseman for the Cleveland Indians? And I said, I I'm, I'm in Wisconsin right now. And I, I don't know. And he said, you have to know the answer to that question if you're going to get this job. So he proceeded to call me every night for about six weeks and give me his version of a Cleveland sports quiz. I read all of Terry Pluto's books um, about the drive and the fumble. There's one about Bernie. There's one about the Browns moving. Um, I listened to Joe Tate broadcasts in Wisconsin after the sun went down. You could hear WTAM 1100's radio signal. And over those six weeks, I became what I considered a fancy Cleveland sports expert. And I could name all 25 members of the crappy 1996 Cleveland Indians <laughs> by the time this thing was over. Um, and that's sort of how I started to ingratiate myself into the community. The other thing I'll say that I think was really, really important, Les, is I came here and I started working on the air doing high school sports. Um, and when you do high school sports, you start to know the names of every community. And you start to actually go out and meet people and meet their families. And you know what the west side is and the east side is and how the Akron-Canton area sort of connects with the Cleveland area. I think it was super, super important for understanding the geographical landscape of Northeast Ohio. I, unlike Adam, you know, have sort of taken this strong on-air tact. I'm not from here. I didn't grow up here. My earliest sports memory is I was wearing an Elway jersey because I grew up in Denver, watching the drive. So my perspective on things um, on the air is sometimes perceived as anti-Cleveland, um, but I have fallen in love with the community, and, and I now, when I go back to Denver, I say I'm going home, and then when I get on the plane to come back to Cleveland, I say I'm coming home also. And you actually think Rich Carlos's field goal was good? It was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, good for you. Adam the Bull, how did you figure this thing out? I, you know, like I said, once I heard about the possibility, I, I did have months. Obviously, got canceled briefly, but I had done. I had just done a lot of research. I mean, I'm obsessed with baseball in my personal life, so I, I pretty much had a good feel for the Indians to begin with. And for those who know me, may may know that my dad was actually a Browns fan when he was a kid, but he, but because he loved uh, Paul Brown. But then when Paul Brown was fired and and started the Bengals. He became a Bengals fan, uh, unfortunately. But so anyway, so I knew the division pretty well. And you just, you know, you do your research. You, I, I lived in upstate New York and worked in upstate New York, out in western New York for, in central New York for six, eight years. So that, live, it may be New York, but that area is much more like Cleveland than it is New York City. So that was a huge adjustment for me. And I kind of got, I, I, I learned that, something Goldhammer mentioned, is important knowing the names of the towns pronouncing them properly i think i do it although i still don't get some people say cuyahoga some people say cuyahoga so i'm not sure which one is technically correct but i think i got all the names of the towns down by now and i tried to do it immediately so i didn't sound like you know obviously with my accent it's hard to uh, i always find it funny that people say are you from chicago i guess because i'm a cubs fan i don't sound like anything like i'm from chicago but uh but but so it's hard to hide that I'm not from here, but I feel like a Clevelander now since I've been here a long time. I've lived here as, my, as an adult. I've lived more longer in Cleveland than I have in, in the New York area. So, uh, but it was just a lot of research and a lot of studying, book reading, you know, stuff like that. Brad, uh, Aaron mentioned high school. You have uh, two two daughters. Pretty, I understand they're pretty fair players. Not bad. Not, not, not bad. I've got two. Uh, I've got two. Well, I've got four daughters. Uh, two in college and two in high school. The two are in high school at Aurora High. Uh, <laughs> and tonight they play in the, uh, the regional semifinals, the first time ever Aurora girls have ever been to a regional final in basketball. 
I've got a senior that is committed to go to uh, play Division One basketball next year at Purdue Fort, Purdue Fort Wayne, and then I've got a sophomore. The senior is a, a six foot tall. I've got a six two uh, sophomore uh, point guard that is. I'm gonna be a dad here. <laughs> See the best thing coming, right? <laughs> I see the best thing coming around here, right? And I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to be biased, but, you know, I've been around the game long enough to see, you know, as a father, you sit up here and you see your kid, and you're like, when they're playing, they're like, they all right, you know? And so then I'm looking a little better, and I'm saying, something different here. So she played last week in the, in the uh, uh, district finals to qualify for the regionals, played against Stowe. Uh, so we came back and won 51 to 40, 51 to 48, excuse me, 51 to 48, and she had 40 of the 51. Wow. <laughs> and she, she doesn't pass the ball? No, 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 here, here, and this is what she, what she is, Les, she is, she's the one, nope, she's the one because she leads some rebounding assists. Okay. She's the one that understands. She's been a beneficiary of playing under three older sisters. But she's the one that comes to the table every day and is not to be defeated, right? And so whatever it takes to win in this game here, she didn't do that every day. But today, that day, we needed those 40 points to be alive, yeah. right? And so she took it upon her shoulder. And tonight, if you're going down to Canton tonight, you're going to see something special tonight. I'm going to just... Well, just, good luck to you. <laughs> good luck. All right. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate, so no mold or mildew. Plus, it has a higher insulation rating than carpet and is warmer than linoleum, vinyl, wood, or tile. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable basement floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Every year is an interesting year here in Cleveland sports. And somebody said, once said to me, how, how do you do it for so long? And uh, how do you come up with topics? Uh, you don't come up with topics in this town. The topics come to you. They fall in your lap. Um, I don't think any other city has the kind of stuff happen that we've had happen. Last um, to your point, sorry to cut you off, but that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> to your point, um, I have friends in the business all over the country who call me all the time, you are so lucky, the things you get to talk about. I mean, it's amazing the story, in the last seven and a half years, the stories that we've had in this town, some good, some unfortunately bad, uh, but it, it really is amazing. Yeah, well, it's happened You're 100 for a lot of years. right with that. Yeah. And by the way, your dad was a Paul Brown fan. How about yes. the fact that Art Modell, the lovable Art Modell, fired Paul Brown and Bill Belichick? What an idiot. <laughs> That's Hall of Fame material right there. All right, I, I want to open it up because this year is different for the, over the last 20 years and, mm. and so on, and three years of hiatus before that with the Cleveland Browns. We're not looking for a quarterback. We're not looking for a head coach. It's totally different. So I'll throw it open to the uh, Sports Talk guys. How are you handling the difference of covering the Cleveland Browns this year? And by the way, both stations, uh, of course, do cover the Cleveland Browns. So how do you, how do you handle it? It is... It, I don't think we know fully yet, but, you know, the last, until this past season, 
there were a number of years where you weren't doing a lot of analysis of the upcoming game because the Browns were so bad, especially the second half of the season for many of the past few years until this past year. The Browns were so bad that it was almost pointless to get into X's and O's of the game because you knew they weren't going to win and there were so few talented players. But that's going to change. I think we're going to spend a lot more time this year to some degree on X's and O's and stuff surrounding the details of the game rather than the drama that has surrounded the team in the past. I think it's already a big difference because we're not spending as much time. We used to spend so much time on the draft as anybody listens to us knows, and we're not really spending much time at this point. Usually by now, we're full draft coverage, and we're not talking much draft at all. We did almost, uh, was that with you? or with, I think it was with, with uh, Jeff. We did two, two and a half hours on Drew Stanton the other day that people want to talk about the backup quarterback and what kind of position this team is. It's night and day. I mean, and I'm still a little bit one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake because, I mean, you just never know. And we've lived in misery for so long that it's, it's easy to kind of go back and say, okay, let's hold our horses. We finally have a quarterback and we think we have a coach. Uh, I think we'll figure it out. But it's been refreshing to not sit here and talk about the draft and the draft and the draft. I mean, that's all we used to do this time of year. And that fans are, are genuinely optimistic about what's going on. It's, it's been refreshing. It's been, you know, it's been fun to go to work. It's, it's always fun to go to work. But, I mean, now it's, we're talking about playoffs and you don't feel like you're going to shoot yourself in the head afterwards. Freddie Kitchens said it right, though. We've got to remind ourselves they were only 7, 8, and 1, which is below 500. And yet it's almost like uh, the next step is the Super Bowl. And it's, it's, that's a big step. Aaron, what, how are you handling it? Yeah, but think about the, Aaron, just real quick. Think about the fact that the Browns are mediocre and the Cavs are trying to be mediocre <laughs> and that we celebrate the Browns being mediocre and, and are just devastated by the fact that the Cavaliers are – you know, like, oh, they're, they're horrible or this, that. But there's some good things going yeah, on and, there, Yeah, and too. the Indians, uh, they've won three straight division titles, and that's not good enough for that's people. Right. So. <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah. Hammer? Um, we've posted some crazy polls on social media over the course of the last couple weeks. Um, who had a better rookie year, LeBron or Baker Mayfield? Wow. 10,000 votes, 75% Baker Mayfield. Really? Really. Who's closer to winning a championship, the Indians or the Browns? 10,000 votes, 75% the Browns. The Indians have five of the top 50 players in baseball. Les, I think that, um, I think Cleveland is drunk right now. <laughs> I think Cleveland is drunk, is drunk on the Browns. And it's, it's fun, and it's new, and it's different. You know, we're, we're debating, I talked to Sam, you know, all, and our team, we have a lot of great members of our team here today, all the time about, like, we have this draft party that, like, uh, Adam and Andy were talking about, that is the biggest thing we do all year. It's our biggest signature event. What do we do with it now? Like, is draft night as big as the schedule release? Because the sense I get from fans, I had two people this morning before I came up here Ask me if I knew how many primetime games the Browns are going to get on Monday and Sunday night football. I think we are entering into a whole new world order. Um, and only someone who is here in the 80s could really explain a little bit of what that's like. But in this current dynamic with social media, fans engaging with sports the way they do in 2019, I think we're entering also into an unknown. I think we don't know what Cleveland is really like when the Browns are good in this culture and dynamic that we have. Brad, growing up in Cleveland, were you a big Browns fan? Big, big time Browns fan. And so to, to, to my colleagues here, I'd have to say, Cleveland will always be a Browns town. That, that's what it is, right? And then everybody else is just filled in. We've had good runs, but it's just something electric about the Browns. And if you're a Browns fan, you're a Browns fan until you die, right? No matter where you are, I can tell you a, a, a Jordan story here. This is on the drive, right? So I'm arguing with Michael Jordan for a week long about the Browns in Denver. And so he said, forget it. Put your money on the table. And he said, you know, he's a betting guy. <laughs> I'll bet you a thousand. Who knew? <laughs> he's like, I'll bet you a thousand dollars that the Browns don't beat Denver, right? And so as the game was played, you remember Denver went up and then he's calling on the phone. Bring my money tomorrow. It's, <laughs> it's going down. The Browns make the comeback. 
We get on the, and we get close, we get close before, before the fumble. I call him back. I said, no, 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 you bring my money tomorrow. <laughs> and so, short story, at the end, when, when Viner is running the ball and leaves it on the carpet at the one, it only took 10 seconds later. <laughs> I told you, bring my money tomorrow. <laughs> and so, but it, that, it is that kind of uh, thing that the folks here in Cleveland are, are enamored with. And I think the Indians have a good pro, uh, product. They've been, they've, been, they've been great over the years here. And, and the Cavs have had a, a great run. Don't look at this year. They've had a great run, right? And so uh, we're in a rebuilding setup now. But I just think, Les, it's always going to be a Brownstown everybody fills in after that, right? Because my, my wish is, is just a person that grew up here, can I please go to a Brown Super Bowl before I die? <laughs> and I don't care if you live across this country, I don't care where it is, you will see the city that that ever occurs in filled with Cleveland folks from across this country, just like the parade was when the Cavs won that championship. Cavs won a championship? <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, Les. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so, let me throw this out at you guys. Does, does, the, Brown, does uh, the Cavaliers winning their championship as they did in 16, does it buy them and the other teams in, in town, does it give them a pass to, to not win? Or, uh, and, and tied in with LeBron James, how differently we feel about him. And I know uh, all of you guys are talking about who are you rooting against, uh, Kyrie or, uh, or LeBron. And that, that's what sports talk in Cleveland has been reduced to at times. So, I think the, so is it, I think the Indians a got a pass. The Indians got a pass in the World Series because the Cavs won. I think that people, and you tell me, I, I don't want to say someone up here is a Cubs fan, but <laughs> I'm just curious. I mean, how did you, when we were going through the World Series, you know, I was like, okay, all right, the Cavs won. I kind of feel like we got our championship. I thought the Indians got there a little earlier than I thought they were going to get there. And then when they lose in game seven, you don't realize. I, the one thing I do realize is that if, LeBron doesn't come up with a block, and Kyrie doesn't come up with a shot, and Kevin doesn't play great defense, we are right there on the ESPN reel of misery again if the Cavs hadn't won that series. And then knowing that the Indians would have lost in seven games, I mean, it would have been the, dark, the darkest of clouds. So I'm asking you that. Did we get a pass on that? Did we give the Indians a pass? I, uh, I don't think fans are giving them a pass now. I feel like at the time, I mean... Let's, let's face it, that wasn't the team that should have gone to the World Series. The year after was the year they should have gone to the World Series. They had no business getting to the World Series with essentially a rotation of just Corey Kluber at the end. I mean, everybody else in the rotation was, was in trouble, and that's why they needed to win those series quick, which they did until the World Series. And once the series went longer, it obviously was a disadvantage because of their, rotation. you know, they, they threw Kluber too many times on short rest. And obviously, he hasn't been the same pitcher in the playoffs the two years since, but I don't think I think fans are angry because the Indians have cut the payroll and I don't think I think they got a pass at the time to some degree especially because they played so great I mean to get to game seven of the World Series is quite an accomplishment but I, I think now fans are angry and they're like yeah so what they've won especially because they haven't done it you know since being up 3-1 in the World Series they've lost nine of 11 playoff games so uh, I don't think there's a pass anymore and I still think they'll probably make the playoffs this year only because their division's not very good, but the Twins have closed the gap. And I don't think it's impossible that the Twins could win the division. Uh, I, I, I guess I sense, guys, that th there used to be in a big game in Cleveland this sense of dread, waiting for the other shoe to drop, 52 years. I mean, that's a pretty heavy freaking weight. Um, and if the Indians get back there, I think their weight of 71 years, which is the longest drought of any professional team, would weigh on them to an extent. But the fact that everybody here now has tasted a winner does make a difference, I think, in the psyche of the fan base. I don't know if it matters to the players themselves as they're playing the games, but I think in the overall like sports culture, I think it's there. And then, you know, I, I think um, there is now, like An Andy talked about, you know, what if it doesn't work out for the Browns. There's a world in which they go six and ten, right? This year, Baker could get hurt. He's a six foot quarterback. No one's thinking that way. And I think if the Cavs had lost that series to the yeah, Warriors, yeah. I don't think I don't think we would have fallen in love so hard and fast and had that belief that it could happen yeah. because it happened that night in Oakland. How, how many feel the way I did in 1995? Indians were leading the division by 29 games, and. Um, uh, they're playing Baltimore. It's early September. You don't clinch in early September, but 
I think it was around September 8th or 9th that the Indians had a chance, if they beat Baltimore that night, that they clinched the division. And it's about it's top of the ninth inning, and the, there's a pop-up to, toward the third base coaching side, or uh, co coaching box, and Jim Tomey's moving over to make the catch. And I'm thinking, how is he going to drop this ball, and then they're going to lose 29 games in a row? How many felt that same way? <laughs> I mean, we all did until it actually happened. And you forget Tommy was a skinny third baseman at the time. I thought you were going to say Joel Skinner was going to pop out on the field you know, and stop him from catching I'll, it. What Andy's talking about is I, Joel Skinner is one of the nicest guys any of us ever met. But he made one of the stupidest calls in the history of yeah. Indians baseball when, when uh, Kenny Lofton's coming around third base and, 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 Loft, and uh, Skinner, the third base coach, stops him. Remember the play in Boston? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, and Boston went on to score seven or eight runs in the, in the uh, eighth inning to put the game away. And some guys kept saying, well, they, it wasn't an important play. Uh, they lost by seven or eight runs. Well, no, it was an important play. You got Manny Ramirez coming in from left field. He's going to throw the ball into the upper deck. Uh, all right, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs>
could be very productive for this team, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone here could deny that. But there's some risk in it, right? Yep. So well, do you do you play it safe and stay where we are? Or do you try to push the envelope and see if it because if it doesn't work out, you can always change course. Yeah. You can. Aaron, good move, bad move. Um, it's the one thing I'll criticize Dorsey for. Um, I didn't like the timing of it. I think they could have waited and waited for the NFL to issue the suspension, waited to know more information. I don't know why they had to rush into this decision. And then I also think this shouldn't be a factor, but it is, right? I mean, Kareem Hunt happens to play the most replaceable position in sports. C.J. Anderson was on the street, and then he was rushing for 150 yards in a playoff game a couple of weeks later. So I think if you ever had an injury at running back, you could find someone who could step in and replace him. I, I think he's a talented player, um, but I just didn't understand the timing and the why behind the, the Browns doing this now. Andy, good move, bad move? I think it's a good move. I think it's low risk. Um, if it doesn't work out, it's the, they have nothing to lose. I wonder what they're going to do with Duke Johnson, which has pretty much been the big storyline for the last 24 hours. Um, I, I also question the timing of it. But I think if you look at it from a PR standpoint, you're trying to figure out what the news cycle will be. You know that when you sign him, uh, there's going to be a lot of hoopla about it. You're going to take a lot of heat for it. So they've taken the brunt of the heat now in the offseason. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to percolate again a little bit once we find out what the suspension is. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, though, once they hit the suspension. It'll be a big deal when he returns back to the field. But I think if you look at the news cycle and the way that stories live for 24, 48 hours, I think it's easier to eat it in January than it is in the middle of camp, so, or in the middle of camp, or even during the season when it starts. So I think it's, uh, it's very low risk. Um, all the pressure's on Kareem. Uh, if it doesn't work out, we've already lived this with Josh Gordon, so I think we've already had a taste of what it is. And you know, if he can play the way he did in Kansas City, it's more reason to believe that he'll be as, as you know, that this team can make the playoffs and, and what they can do from there. So I think he's a great running back. He just needs to get his head on straight. Adam, Adam the Bulls, good yeah. move, bad news? I, I, well, I mean, from a pure football standpoint, obviously it's a good move, but I didn't like it. I, I didn't think it was a good idea. Uh, even from a football standpoint, you have Nick Chubb, who I think could be one of the, you know, an elite back. I think he was already showing that the second half of last year. I don't think you need two elite backs. Obviously, it's a nice thing to have if you can have it, but I don't think it's a necessity, at, uh, unlike other positions where it's good to have elite play, you know, more than one elite player. I think it's very disappointing. I think it sends a bad message, especially to women in, in the community. But I think it's really a, a league problem. I don't think he should be eligible to be signed. Uh, I think we're so quick, people are so quick to say he deserves a second chance. I don't think anybody deserves a second chance. I think you earn a second chance. I think he earn, you earn a second chance with your actions. I think guys should have to prove they're truly remorseful because when somebody, when a man puts his hands on a woman, I never, and they say they, you know, apologize or they're remorseful in a press conference. I, my belief is I don't believe them in most cases until it's proven. So I would have liked to see Kareem Hunt or any other guy that's arrested or in trouble for this uh, take real steps, work with uh, women's group shelters, women's groups, really do things that prove that they want to change as a human being. I do think people can change, and I think people can earn a second chance. I don't think he has. I think the Browns have handled it very poorly. I, I love John Dorsey, but I thought he handled that initial press conference poorly. Yeah. I thought the – I think it's a terrible job that Kareem Hunt hasn't spoken yet. He should have talked to the Cleveland media already. That's a, that's a huge problem I have with that. They keep saying he's remorseful. How do we know that's true? So, listen, eventually we're going to just talk about football. And from a football perspective, obviously, you know, I just said I want to get Odell Beckham. You want to get as many weapons as possible, and he is a great player. Uh, but, you know, Andy says we lived through Josh Gordon. Yeah, and part of the problem was you can never trust that Josh was going to stay on the field, and that worked as a real negative for the team. And, well, you know, the Browns are now developing a reputation, like it or not, as, you know, it used to be, oh, the Bengals have all these criminals. Well, now every time there's a player with questionable character, people are connecting them to the Browns in terms of the draft and stuff like that. And, I, you know, with all the good feelings about the team, I don't – that doesn't make you feel good, I think. How do you uh, show remorse without looking like um, that it's a PR stunt? So if he goes – let's say he goes to yep. the, uh, uh, you know, the women's shelter today – yeah, I but mean, not, everyone's don't make it public. 
Don't make it public. Well, but you're saying you want him to come out and talk, and you yeah, want well, him to come out there and say that. Women's shelter. Andy, I think that's pretty cynical. I do. I think that what I'm saying is cynical. Or yeah, I, 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 yeah, because I think that you know the he's in this position, and if he took the time, I, I think it's more about time than it is about money, in in my mind. So I think, like, if he threw a bunch of like money at the problem, I might sort of sense what you're saying. I'm but, not talking about money. I'm talking about volunteering. I'm talking about yeah. getting out there like um, yeah. Isaiah Crowell. Yeah. I mean, uh, Isaiah Crowell went the extra mile after he yes. put something right. stupid, right? Yeah, and, and did you feel like he was doing that just because... No, I actually felt like after reading what he did that he actually learned something. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I agree with that. So I don't, I don't think that uh, it would come off to me as, oh, he's just doing this for public relations if he took the time and energy like you're saying. Yeah, I don't know, but I do think that people would think that he did it for... I, I mean, you I look never at, know what's in somebody's heart yeah. for sure. And, 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 but, I'm, yeah. and I'm just saying, right. I think no, that that's yeah. a sin that it, people might think that, but I think it's a cynical thing to think. I mean, he's now in this position, and it would, to what Adam said, it would make a difference to me rather than everyone getting so excited about how you know he's like in the building a lot or whatever. No, I understand that, what you're that, saying. That, that we hear that, like I, I would like to see that. It, it would, it, to me, and for all we know, he's doing it behind the scenes, and, and we don't know. And that's the point. So, like Adam was saying, I'd like to see him come out and talk to the media, but if he's do it, so if we find out six months from now that this is what he's been doing, then does that change? You know, it, it, I think there are things would, that athletes I think, do. I, that I like to hear how guys explain themselves. I, re, you know, I recently heard um, Addison Russell of the Cubs was uh, in trouble and he's suspended baseball. And I thought the Cubs should have cut him. I'm very angry that he's still on the team. He held a press conference in spring training and complete. Com came out to me as completely disingenuous. I didn't. I thought he was reading off a script. And I would like to know, like. If Kareem Hunt talks, how does he does he does he sound really remorseful, or does it sound like he's reading a speech that his lawyer prepared for him? That would make a difference to me. I want to hear I want to hear from him. I think he owes it, and the Browns owe it to us to hear what he has to say right now. And it's disappointing we well, haven't heard his speech. Here, here's what you're dealing with, Andy. I filled in for you a week or two ago, and some guy called and said, well, "Where's Andy?" No, pardon? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? No, you said you filled in for me, and the guy said, and I said, "Never mind. Keep okay. going." This is like working so, with Phelps. Oh, my God. Take, take two. Uh, so as I was saying, um, Andy, I filled in for you a week or two ago, and some guy called and said, well, he didn't kick her that hard. And then you just, you just want to. Yeah. I heard, I heard that That's call, Les, actually. I, the you, reality, though, Les, is. is uh, I was streaming in a commercial break that we <laughs> had. <laughs> no. no, I mean, that's what you're dealing with. I, as a, as a, uh, a Browns fan and a. I mean, I've been going to Cleveland Browns games since Jim Brown days. And I gave, and I had season tickets since I think 1979, and I gave them up the minute Jimmy Haslam walked into the room and said, we're picking Johnny Manziel. I, I actually turned in my tickets at that moment and haven't bought a ticket since. But as a Browns fan, I feel like Adam, Adam the Bull. Um, I, I'm totally offended by the fact that they signed the guy. And from a football standpoint, you know, there's a part of me that, he gets the ball at the 20-yard line, and he's breaking free, going for a touchdown. There's a part of me saying, well, that's Kareem Hunt, and you all know what he did. Oh, by the way, run faster. You know, I mean, we're all going to feel that way, but we're going to feel, I'm going to feel dirty about it, Les, to be I honest think, with you. I think, you know, the caller you mentioned, I think there's, a, there's always going to be a percentage of the population that doesn't care what the guys do, don't care if guys are abusive. Maybe they're abusive themselves. There's probably, you know, whatever, 10%. I think the majority of fans really struggle with this especially in a city like Cleveland where football is so much, or sports in general, but football is so much an identity of the city. It's part of who you are. It's part of how you grew up. And so you love the Browns, and that's in your heart. There's nothing you could do. You, you, you can't just pretend you're not a fan of the team anymore. And when your team signs a player that's, that's a, a bad guy or, or maybe a bad guy, I think most of us are bothered by it, but we can't help that we still root for our team, and it puts us in a tough situation. Yeah. I'm, I'm never mad at fans. I, I never get, can blame a fan when they say, listen, I hate what Kareem Hunt did, and I'm appalled by it, and it bothers me, but I got to admit I'm still going to root for the team. I don't have a problem with that. It's the people that defend the actions. Yeah. That, that's appalling. Brad, go ahead. I, I, I would just say that, you know, here, I don't think anybody's excusing what Kareem Hunt did, right? I've got four daughters, and I wouldn't want my daughter to be on the end of it, right? And I, uh, in full transparency, my daughter went to school with him in Toledo. And she said, Dad, he's a decent guy. But if you check his history, 
he's got some factors working against him, right? He has some major factors working against him. Yeah. But unlike a lot of folks, I believe in redemption. I do, right? I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself, right? And it doesn't have to be public, right? But I'm going to give you an honest to God shot. I think that if you fall down in this world, you should have a chance to pick yourself up, right? I just believe that, right? Yeah. And I don't think that signing him to this team is signifies to, to the Cleveland fan base that we're a bunch of convicts, right? I just don't think that, right? Go out and look at the Raiders, right? Go talk to me after you come back from the Raiders. <laughs> or the Bengals. Uh, uh, come, back, come back to me and talk from that, right? But what happens in this town is one misstep or two missteps here, it just sinks the whole thing, right? I'll go back to the, the Cavaliers had what I feel like one is one of the greatest teams ever in the NBA. That team with Lan uh, Nance, Doherty, Harper, Elo, that was a team, right? And the only thing stood between them and a the championship was my Chicago Bulls. That was it, right? But that was a team. And people talk about people not really appreciating what you have, right? That was a team that you should never break up. But because of there some perceptions in the community, they felt like they had to move Ron Harper, right? Which destroyed this team for a decade. Right? And so if you if you pay attention here, right, Ron Harper's a great person, right? But you have to have people that believe in people. I just feel that way. Yeah. And I think Dorsey, to your point, Brad, is he really sincerely believes in this case. Tell me if you guys agree with this. I think one of the reasons that he signed him when he did is that he has known Kareem Hunt a long time and that he feels like he wants to have his back. He wanted Cleveland to be the team that gave him that opportunity and helped him in his life. Um, I just think, I guess, Brad, that in my opinion, like it's more than one incident, certainly, with Kareem. Um, there's been stories going all the way back to when he was at Willoughby South about why he ended up at Toledo yep. and wasn't more highly recruited to begin with. I remember doing high school hysteria when, I mean, he was a Tecmo Bowl and that's not, I mean, that's not, football Aaron, that's player. not disputed. It's not, yeah. he, he has some factors working against him, right? Yes. And I yes. live in a world, to the job I do every day, yes. I deal with a lot of factors, right? I can't put blinders on and say they don't exist, right? My job sometimes is trying to understand why they exist and if I can, if I can at least put people in a position mm -hmm. to try to correct things. So and what I say, it, 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 they ta they're taking a risk. They are taking a risk. But the issue is, is the soul redeemable? Does he have any qualities? Oh, Shane? the other question is, some people will say, well, he's coming to Cleveland and that's good, it's his hometown. There's another set, fact, yeah. faction that would say, you gotta get him as far away from Cleveland and those, those factors, get him, get him out somewhere else and maybe he won't be affected. And, I, you know, to me, too, I think, you know, there are all kinds of people that I know in my life that have grown up in all kinds of challenging circumstances, um, and they don't do the things that Kareem Hunt yeah, no did. Yeah. So I, I don't, I, I understand that. My eyes are open that he grew up in a much different world than me, and that I was afforded things growing up in the Denver Jewish community that Kareem Hunt didn't have when he was 15 years old. A bris. A bris is <laughs> definitely one. A good rabbi is another. Um, but I, but I think I, I, that that excuse to me that 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 someone who's defending him might fall back on. Look, I, I understand it, but I know plenty of people. LeBron grew up in incredibly difficult yeah. circumstances, and he's not on, right. on any videos. The concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Reduce tracked in dirt, eliminate puddling and salt damage. Plus, Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Naturestone is the affordable garage floor solution that beautifies your home. Naturestone, the only concrete solution. It's the best of the best, Cleveland. All-star cars, hot rods, and motorcycles at the 2019 Summit Racing Equipment IX Piston Powered Autorama. March 15th, 16th, and 17th at the IX Center. If a piston makes it go, it's in this all-star show. Featuring motorcycles, antique trucks, insane hot rods in the asylum, tractors, military vehicles, along with all-star themed car clubs on display. New this year is Fat Man's Invasion with Euro Imports, Sport Compacts, Lowriders, and more. PistonPowerShow.com for details. Kids 12 and under are free. Discount tickets on sale now at select discount drug mark locations and Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge.
Cavaliers, uh, they, it's a tough situation. They, they win a game and people are upset with it. They lose a game, people are upset with it. Brad, help me out here. What, what, are, what are we supposed to do here? <laughs> and, and even if they get the top pick, they, they, would, they would pick Zion, wouldn't they? I would. Right. I, <laughs> I would. Here, so the, Cav, the, the way the league is structured now, they're no longer uh, uh, in the day where you can have, in my era, you had 10 great players on a team. I only had five starters and the, and the five or six guys that came off the bench. They could have went to other teams and played significant minutes. Everywhere. It's not like that because of the salary now, the salary structure of this league. So you, you, you're, you're doing good to have three guys on a team and then the rest are serviceable people. So when LeBron cut out of town, right, pretty much left us with the cupboard there, right? And so we're in, we're in a rebuilding mode. I don't think that's blind to anybody here. I think the upside on Cleveland is – I think they're doing it the right way. They've got guys out there playing hard, trying to win games, right? They just don't have enough to get over the hump on a, on a nightly basis. But I think the way the league is structured now, you have to look at the Philadelphia model and, and teams like that. You have to go down to the bottom to come back up. And if can you try can to, a medium-sized market do that? Yeah, you can do it. You can do it, but I, 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 you may not have the longevity that a bigger-sized market yeah. could do. The problem is when you try to play the middle of the road, I'm just going to hang around. I'm going to be the team to make the A seed in the playoffs out and put, get it put out in the first round. It gets you nowhere. Yeah. It really does. Hammer, they doing the right thing? Or? I think they lucked out that Love got hurt because otherwise they wouldn't really be in play for Zion Williamson. Uh, the problem with this draft, from what I know, um, and like any good Clevelander, I watch about three minutes of college basketball before March anyway, um, is that this draft behind Zion is bad. And so if you don't get the number one pick, it's going to be really hard to find a franchise-changing player anywhere else. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I just think it's going to be hard. The one thing they haven't done that I don't like, they, they've had no stability in their front office at all. And when you're rebuilding a team, lottery balls matter. But Steph Curry wasn't the number one pick in the draft, and Klay Thompson wasn't the number one pick in the draft, and Kevin Durant wasn't the number one pick in the draft, and the Warriors got Draymond Green in the second round of the draft. The Nuggets, the team I grew up rooting for, found Nikola Jokic, who is one of the best players in the league now. They found him in the second round. So I think it's really important now that the Cavs have a good general manager who knows how to find talent, like Brad was saying about Jerry Krause. And I just think the jury is still totally out on Kobe Altman in that regard. I, I don't know whether he's the right guy, but I'll tell you, I would feel better if Griff was still there. But do you even believe Kobe Altman is making the decisions? Because I don't. I think Dan Gilbert overrules everything. He runs the show. And that's why, unless the Cavs get lucky and get Zion and you know end up in a situation with another generational player, I think it's going to be hard for them to win. Dan Gilbert spends money. I give him credit for that. And he spent a lot when the when the Cavs were winning, but by all accounts, he, he's a, the reason they never keep any consistency is because guys get frustrated. He doesn't want to pay anybody. I mean, he doesn't want to pay anybody in terms of the front office, and he overrules what they do. He thinks he knows basketball, and as long as he's making the basketball decisions, I, I don't think there's any reason to have much faith at all that the Cavs can find those second, you know, because you, you mentioned those second round picks, late first rounders. Those do happen, but they're few and far between. And you yeah. get good players there. You have to have a really good GM. As but it's said. how Denver yeah. and Milwaukee have built their teams. I mean, Giannis right, but they have the... good management now. I, yes. I, it's, right now, I can't say the Cavs do. You, you have to talk to me about Denver and Milwaukee when they actually win something. Right? Yeah. Denver has won nothing. That's Milwaukee true. hasn't won anything yeah. since Kareem was there. Right? So <laughs> they're, they're, that's an example of those middle-of-the-road teams that always seem to be middle-of-the-road. And the people in Milwaukee must be happy with being put out in the first or second round. And Denver's just lucky to be in the dance. Right? When you are really a, 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 a significant team, it is, to Bull's point, it is, and Aaron's point, it is the people that go to the high school games, right, that are watching. Te they're, little, they're just gym people. They know all the players. They know where people are. They know if the people are in, in Montana playing, right? And they can find the people. When you get a, a, a person that just, you know, let me get the guy from Duke because I see him on TV every week. Yeah, right. Let me get that person over there, right? It never works out. No. It's not the star player. <laughs> it is the additional pieces around the star players that make the team. I was screaming for Draymond Green when the Cavs had a chance to pull him in, in his draft because I, I had watched him at Michigan State. I said, that kid's going to be a player. 
He's going to be a player, not a, not a superstar, but a, sub, uh, a supporting player that can make a, a difference to a team. Andy, they, where do they go from here? Well, let me just go back on this whole thing. I think, first of all, we have this huge misconception about the NBA draft because we've sat around it for years and thinking about the NFL draft. And, Brad, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, if you're outside of the top five, it's a crapshoot that you're going to have oh, a good yeah. career. And Always. I think that we get we just get so enamored with saying we've got to get this great second round pick or we got it. I mean, the hits on those on the Draymond Greens are few and far between, and they got really lucky in in at Golden State. In fact, at one point, Golden State had made a phone call to the Cavs and said we will trade if you want to trade Kyrie Irving for both of the Sla Splash Brothers. Um, they were going to do it. And Golden State wanted to do this, right, Brad? Right, right. And it didn't ha I mean, the Cavs said, no, we want to keep Kyrie. So, I mean, some of the moves you make are, I mean, I hate to sound like Mark Spiro, but some of the moves you make uh, are the ones that you don't make are the best moves that you're going to make. I know that didn't really make sense, but it makes sense in my world. Um, I also, I just think when it comes to the NBA draft, that you've got to look at those first four picks as all having an equal chance. So winning and losing now at this time of year really doesn't make that much of a difference. The top three picks all have an equal chance at pick one, pick two, pick three because of the way things have shifted out. Now, if you land in second, you can't do any worse than fourth. If you land in third, you can't do any worse than, than fifth. So I have no problem with the Cavaliers winning right now. It looks like they're going to be a bottom three team, and they're going to have that same 14% chance as the other teams that are going in there. All right, thank you. I just want to thank everybody for uh, putting up with us. And we love Aaron, sometimes. When my dad started Nature Stone, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences, from the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine.